Many cities have too much of this and this, and many farms have too much of this, and everywhere there is generally too little of this, clean and modern forms of energy. These are all serious challenges, but can they be addressed together and at the same time? If you ask Nepal's new breed of energy entrepreneur, the answer is a resounding yes. West is not West, it is money, it is a resource. That's Ms. Bishnu Takale, the director of the Women Environment Preservation Committee, or WEPCO, a non-profit organization formed by a group of housewives in 1992 and dedicated to cleaning and conserving the urban environment in the Kathmandu Valley. After introducing paper collection and recycling in Kathmandu, WEPCO's innovation and initiative in solid waste management has turned to promoting biogas from vegetable waste. WEPCO is part of the country's drive to turn solid waste into clean energy, a move supported by the Climate Investment Funds through the Scaling Up Renewable Energy in Low-Income Countries program. Nepal is a pilot country of the program and part of a larger effort to expand energy access and markets for renewable energy in the world's poorest countries. The program helps to finance solar, wind, geothermal, small hydro, and bioenergy projects. With more than 250,000 rural household biogas digesters installed across the country in the past two decades, Nepal is now using the Scaling Up Renewable Energy Program to develop large-scale commercial, institutional, and municipal bioenergy projects. In 2013, Nepal's Alternative Energy Promotion Center, together with the World Bank, tapped the program to pilot a waste-to-energy bazaar that encouraged entrepreneurs from around the Himalayan country to showcase their most innovative concepts for turning Nepal's growing mountain of waste into clean energy. In the southern province of Chitwan, Shuba Biomass is scaling up the production of cleaner burning briquettes from sawmill and other woody wastes to serve as heating needs in the commercial and residential sectors. It's a new market and it's tough. Mr. Prachin Srestra explains the challenges for such new enterprises in Nepal. Basically, we need help with finance and technology. If we get these two things right with a good governing policy, uh, we would definitely make our business a thriving business and this would solve a lot of issues with deforestation, use of dirty fuels, and it would be a major boom to our economy and our country. Nearby, the largest cattle farm has 350 dairy cows producing nearly 10 tons of effluent every day. The company, Lumbini Agroproducts, was a finalist in the bazaar, submitting a bioenergy project with multiple benefits. The construction of biogas will have three benefits. First, the waste produced in the farm, mainly cow dung, can be managed sustainably. Second, this waste can be converted into energy, including biogas and electricity. And third, the residual waste can be sold as fertilizer. The company hopes to annually convert its waste to 1 million cubic meters of biogas, 1.5 gigawatt hours of electricity, and 3,500 tons of valuable fertilizer. To do that, they will need an investment of $8 million, which they calculate can be paid back in less than three years. The most ambitious project and another finalist in the bazaar is located in Nepal's western city, Pokhara. With the backdrop of the magnificent Himalayas, the city's landfill is a stark reminder of an unsustainable waste stream. The project by Gold Rush Proprietary Limited will use a range of conventional and advanced technologies to generate 8 megawatts of electricity from 96 tons of waste each day more than 200 jobs will also be created. Nepal will be tapping the Scaling Up Renewable Energy Program in the next phase to screen projects for a range of support, including direct finance and referrals to other agencies.
only projects demonstrating commercial and technical viability together with the capable implementation team will receive support. For projects such as the Pokhara landfill, one thing is abundantly clear. Without the support of the Climate Investment Fund, this project will be very, very, very difficult to do.